Hey, this is Janine with your Diamond Mentor Moment. Today, we're going to talk about something that is very important, something that my company focuses on, something that is going to be key moving forward. We are going to be talking about leadership. Leadership, leadership, leadership. Okay, so I'm going to start my screen. All right, how leadership affects team creativity. What does that look like moving forward in a post-pandemic world? First of all, intercultural creativity, that is the term, the concept that we are sharing around the world. This is the process of problem finding and problem solving with value, relevance, and novelty with people from different cultures, different lived experiences, different backgrounds than yourself. How do we come together and create together? What you may not know, or you might know, is that intercultural creativity, intercultural competence, creativity, innovation, rises and falls on leadership. Leadership is so important. Leaders can create a positive team culture, which is necessary for intercultural creativity to thrive. Some of you guys have been hearing the term psychological safety, and I'll be looking at how that is an integral part to creativity and to innovation. So psychological safety is a precursor to add adaptive, innovative performance, which is needed in today's rapidly changing world on every level, on the individual level, on the team level, and the organizational level. So when we talk about psychological safety, we have to talk about leadership, okay? The style of leadership, the normal style that we've been used to for the past decades, that's heading out the door. That style is called authoritative leadership. Basically, that's the leadership where it's it's my way or the highway. It's very demanding. It's like this picture says, the boss is being a certain way with the team members and there's no say, there's no psychological safety, there's no inclusiveness, there's no challenging ideas, there's no open expressiveness of their creative thoughts. It's just my way or the highway, do your job description, do as I say, be seen and not heard. So that type of leadership, which has been very prevalent over the past you know, half, you know, centuries or so, is heading out the door because if your goal is to be highly creative, you have to be mindful of the leaders that you're putting in place on every level. And so that authoritative leadership is out the door. The types of leadership that we're looking to cultivate, and that's why the training of these soft skills, of communication skills, and of intercultural creativity skills are coming into play. These are three other types of leaderships that, that has effect on psychological safety, positive team climate within your organization. We have consultative leadership. These leaders consult their teams. There's input. They're asking for input. They have different avenues of gathering input. They do pulse surveys on a regular basis. They want to get feedback on what their team is experiencing. They consider views. They synthesize views. They bring together views of the team. This is consultative leadership. Another type of leadership is supportive leadership. Now, this has an indirect um, effect on psychological safety, but it still um, is effective in creating positive team climates. These leaders show concern and support as team members, but also as individuals. They are supportive. They have good self-awareness, but they also have good other awareness. They have high em empathy skills and they have high EQ. These are, this is your supportive leadership. And then we have challenging leadership. These are leaders that have team members who are creative, they feel empowered, and they seek to learn and grow. And so these are different types of leaderships, but they also can be intertwined. For instance, it's very difficult to have challenging leadership without having the other two forms of leadership in place. And we're gonna talk about what type of cultures this brings about when you have one type of leadership or missing other types of leadership, or if you just have authoritative le leadership. The reason why I'm doing this training, the reason why I do the work that I'm doing and the books that I'm writing is because 
We know the importance of building a culture within the home. We know the importance that parents have on the mindset of a child and the culture that they create and how that child grows up throughout the years and what type of mentality, how they perceive the world, how they take risk, um, how they offer their opinions is really grounded in how the parents create the culture within the home. There's numerous studies that show how teachers can create that culture within their classroom. That a good teacher, if you have a good te te teacher, that it has a good effect on the child for many years to come. But if you have a bad teacher that does not know how to create that culture where the students don't have the opportunity to share, where they can't be themselves, that has an effect on the child. We know the data for the home, we know the data for the classroom, but the data for the workforce, the data for the organization is there as well. And we need to be very mindful of what type of leader and what type of culture the leader is creating for the employees. Employees' creative mindset is highly affected by the leader's behavior. And so the data is there and we know it because here it is. Um, the company McKinsey really pointed out this. They said that most people are stressed because of leadership styles. 56% of American workers claim that their boss is mildly or highly toxic. 75% of Americans say that their boss is the most stressful part of their day. My research shows that these stresses really dampen and lower the ability of people to think creatively. These stresses really make it hard for people to act inter, interconnected and interculturally so they can create together. So this is why leadership styles and leadership training is so key. Another report out of the McKinsey and Company said that leader relationships are a critical aspect to an employee's life satisfaction. What does that look like? If you look to the left of this graph, that drivers of life satisfaction include job satisfaction, mental health, and other. Job satisfaction is 25%, which that breaks down into drivers of job satisfaction, which include interpersonal relationships. Is it an interesting job? And then other. Interpersonal relationships is 39% of, of job satisfaction. So let's break down the interpersonal relationships. That's relationships with management and relationships with coworkers. 86% relationship with managers is um, denotes the drivers of satisfaction of interpersonal relationships at work. So this is trapped back down to job satisfaction and overall life satisfaction. A big part of life satisfaction is your leader relationship with their team employee, which affects their creativity. So when you look at the different leadership styles of a leader within the workplace, they are creating different types of zones, different types of cultures. And we're gonna quickly go through these cultures now. Specific combinations of leadership behaviors tested can shape the way employees view themselves and view their creativity and view the quality of work. Let's look at the apathy zone. When leaders aren't supportive or consultative or challenging, the team member, they show up, they do their job, but they're not being pushed, they're definitely not being supported, they're not being celebrated and valued for who they are. So they're just like, eh. Employees are afraid of interpersonal relationships. They're, re they're re reluctant to, to ask other people for, for help. They're not motivated to offer improvements and suggestions, and they're disengaged and apathetic. How does in innovation come to be? They're motivated to bring in new ideas. They seem that they're a team player. They can connect interculturally with others. If you have a leader who's not supportive, consultative, or challenging, you have team members who are stuck in the apathy zone. Here's another one, the comfort zone. Now this is when you have leaders who are supportive and consultative, but they're not challenging. And when you think of the word lead, it denotes movement. You're leading them somewhere. You're challenging them to grow. You're challenging them to synthesize ideas, to make connections where people aren't making connections. You're challenging them to be leaders within themselves. 
So if you're stuck in the comfort zone, you might be showing behavior such as you just you feel comfortable voicing opinions and you feel appreciated, but you don't display ambition. You're not really pushed to go above and beyond your job description. And there's no huge strides in creativity. So that's what happens when you have the leadership styles of you're supportive, you're consultative, but you're not challenging your people to take it to the next step. So that's the comfort zone. The anxiety zone is when you have a leader that they're not supportive, they're not consultative, so they're not asking the the team members, you know, how they're doing, what they're doing well, what they can do, do better. They're not consulting with the team members, but they're still challenging them. And so Maya, Maya Angelou has a great quote that I love, that um, it doesn't matter what you know until I know that you care. This is big in the classroom. Educators know that, that students don't connect with you until they know that you care. Once you have that social connection, that, 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 that you know, connection with the student where you inquire about who they are and they feel valued, they're more willing to learn from you as opposed to them not being connected to you. So if you're in an anxiety zone, employees, you know, they show anxiety that interferes with collaboration, inquiry and investigation and creativity. They feel alone and unable to ask for help. They don't feel supported or unable to do the work well, and they tend to keep to themselves. So this zone is the opposite of intercultural creativity. And if you're challenging them, but you're not supporting them, they're going to implode, they're going to leave, they're going to to, to check out, and they're going to have high anxiety as well. So you want to really want to make sure that you are supportive because if you're supportive, you're highly supportive. And if you're consultative, you're checking in and you're consulting with them, you're asking for their opinions and and their, their views and you challenge them to grow, that's where you can achieve the flow state of creativity. That's where they feel supportive, they feel challenged, they believe that they can rise to the occasion and they request help, which is Big, they ask questions and they feel that it's safe to challenge the status quo. Why do we do it this way? What if we did it that way? Well, I, I learned this over here. Can this apply to that? They're able to make better connections and they feel the freedom and empowerment to take risk. That is the learning zone. That's the zone we're going to have to get our organizations into as we continue to move past in this post-pandemic world. So once again, your leadership, if you're in a, in a high power position in a CEO or C-suite, being mindful that your leadership is affecting the level of creativity and innovation coming out of your organization. And it's also affecting the personal life of your employees. Because as we saw from the McKinsey study, it trickles down from management, interpersonal relationship, all the way down to life satisfaction. So for intercultural creativity, it rises and falls on leadership. Leaders create these positive team climates that dictate if creative ideas are going to come from your organization. So the training that my company does and that our facilitators do is we help organizations build an inclusive culture of creativity. We look at positive team climate. Predictive skills that leadership trainings have, such as ours, are communication. That self-awareness, so key for intercultural competence. That self-awareness and that other awareness. Cultural awareness. Mindful listening. Active listening is key. Situational awareness and situational humility. That's a new term that we are pushing out into organizational um, framework, situational humility. When leaders have situational humility, they are able to receive feedback. They are able to take challenging ideas and know how to work them well. They are able to handle creative creative um, contag- contagion and social contagion and, and creative growth. That is big for the movement of the organization and the innovation of the organization. And of course, the main skill is intercultural creativity. That is the process of problem finding, 
and problem solving with relevance, value, and novelty with people from different backgrounds and lived experiences. If you want an organization and a team that is high on intercultural creativity, knowing about your leadership styles and knowing about what zone, what culture you're creating with the intermixing of the leadership styles is key. Psychological safety leads to creativity. There's no other way. Your people need to feel psychologically safe to create. And so we are here to help you with that. I'm coming out with my book about the seven gems of intercultural creativity. We talk about psychological safety and leadership styles within the book. And we have our trainings as well at cafestrategies.com. Check us out and we will see you next time. Thanks so much for being here. Bye-bye.